In this presentation, I'm going to go over a brief description of what sailing Z maps are and how we create them, as well as demo a web app that I designed to showcase sailing Z maps. So the intended audience for this presentation is people who already have some understanding of how neural networks work, convolutional neural networks specifically. But I will try to give a brief overview only to the degree that it's useful for understanding sailing CMAPs. So the, the way that neural networks work generally is they are a string of computational operations that are fully differentiable so that when you get to the output layer, you can take some error compared to a desired output and take the gradient of that error function with respect to the model parameters and use that gradient to update the model. What makes convolutional neural networks special is that those computational operations are done in such a way that spatial information about the input is preserved. So if you input an image, then the pixels stay where they are relative to each other as that information is fed through the model. So the way that we make saliency maps is instead of taking a gradient with respect to the, or I'm sorry, the error gradient with respect to the model parameters, what we end up doing is taking the gradient of the class score that we're trying to visualize with respect to the input image itself. So when we take that gradient and push it backwards through the model, what we get out the other end is a sort of activation map of the degree to which a pixel contributed to that class score, the class score whose gradient we took. Um, these values will be spread between negative infinity and infinity, theoretically. So we take the absolute value, since we don't care about the direction of the effect, we simply want to know the degree to which it affected the output. And then we can normalize that into some range so it can be displayed as an image. The reason why salient theme maps are useful is because they help us understand why our network does what it does, why the model gives the response that it did. And a good example of this is a model that was trained by some researchers to distinguish between wolves and dogs. And though the model had relatively high accuracy, when they looked at explanations to why it was making its judgments, they found that the model wasn't actually distinguishing, distinguishing between wolves and dogs but rather it was distinguishing between images with snow in the background and images that didn't have snow in the background. So even though the model was performing relatively well based off of some accuracy metric, it's still useful to know why the model is doing what it's doing. So some examples of the salency maps that my tool outputs. So we, we can see through all of these that the interesting regions of the image really are lighting up and it appears that the network actually is concentrating on the appropriate parts of the image. This one, however, if we look, it seems that the network is actually focusing more on the pavement than it is on the car itself. So to show the tool that I use to create these, this was built using Plotly and Dash. The model being shown is SqueezeNet implemented in TensorFlow. And on the bottom here, I have a gamma slider because when you normalize values over such so large a range, there may be some outliers that really throw off the way that that normalization occurs. And being able to adjust the values in the mid-range can be useful so we can look a little bit more closely at the spread of pixels. So some more examples we can see here that the network does seem to be focusing on the objects that it's meant to be recognizing, which is good. And some also, also some examples where the model doesn't appear to be focusing on anything in particular, or rather focusing on the entire image 
in order to make his judgment. So yeah, that's Salient CMAP implemented in Python using TensorFlow and Plotly.